all at once. That's, that's a good step because that's a little bit closer than the taking time away from the linearity point and starting to realize that it's all happening simultaneously. But what I'm saying is even that will collapse down because what seems to be past lives and, and, and lives or lives that are going on simultaneously are still part of the illusion. Eternity is what's real. That's what we're waking up to. <laughs> In other words, when you wake up from a dream, you, you want to wake up to something that's real. <laughs> That, that is everlasting, that's eternal. And that's what, what this journey is about. So the, it, it gets really deep, but what you start to realize is this whole subject of the split that we were talking about is based on linear time. It's based on these dream figures and these images that come and go, and they keep repeating these same patterns over and over and over. And you probably had that experience in your life where you you, you move deja vu, you, you move on from one situation, job, or some relationship, or whatever, and you're going, it's like deja vu, this is like, the form has changed, but there it is again, again. So that's what linear time does. It just like rolls it up, it just keeps bringing it back over and over and over. Miracles, what they do is, they just collapse time down and bring you closer to the holy instant or closer to the eternal presence. And in the end, that's what, you know, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. You know, when you get to the eternal, you are literally beyond the beginning and the end. You just are. Or Tom and I, we use the phrase, God is. We, that's one of the big phrases. We, we put this foundation together and we just said these two words, God is. <laughs> you know, it's just very simple and direct. And what we, look, we do with this world, we learn to forgive everything else. To wake up to that eternity. So you might, you know, when we were having that talk at Winston Wood that day, it was like, it was timeless, even though we were talking and chatting and boats were going, and sun was moving over the sky and everything, it had a timeless quality to it. And I think everyone has had that experience, whether you're just doing something that you love to do, or you're just taking a walk in nature, or you just lose track of time, and you're just so relaxed and so enjoying yourself, that is a great glimmer of what's in store. You know, that ease, that relaxation, that joy. Not, there's not a sense of productivity. There's not a sense of, I'm doing this as a means to reach a future goal or end. Artists, a lot of times, I guess we talk about the zone, artists talk about, they're just in the flow and, and they're one with the other. that flow going, like you're talking about the standard by a stream. When I first came in contact with conversations with God in photo one, my life completely changed. I had all these miracles happening right when I needed them to. And now it's like four years later, and it's like all that magicalness about it. I'm not, I just don't have that anymore. Is that my perception? Is how, how do you maintain the flood? Like, how could I have kept that magical quality about the way my life was then going still now so that I feel like I'm still on the right path and still following those coincidences? Well, just, just remind yourself, first of all, that, of course, the flow is, is what is, so that's, it's still there, it's still accessible. There's no magic about it. <laughs> I'm not feeling that magic. Well, I, I know, when I went through the magic kind of tons of miracles, I think, but, but the joy, in other words, it's the, the, your feelings, your joy, your vibrancy and everything, that should be like your indicator. And, and what you do is, when you have a situation like you're talking about, and you're not and you're not perceiving that flow or whatever, then you come back to self-honesty. You start to take a look at, at basic things, like your motives for things. Like, like in the course, they, they, it says, here's a question for you. Ask with everything you do, what is it for? Meaning, what is the purpose behind it? That's a wonderful tool. I started doing that when I was in college. I'm taking all these classes. I'm doing all these projects. I'm reading all these books. Now what exactly is this for? Why am I doing, why am I putting all this effort into all this? Then you let the honest answer come. That's how you start to get in touch with your beliefs. Well, it's because I don't believe that money grows on trees. I believe I need a good job, Jesus, when I get out of college. And one way of getting a good job is to have some degrees. And, you know, if I, I'd be honest with you, man, what do you need a good job and lots of money for? Besides eating and clothing, and I want to go 
relationship. And if I'm poor, it's not very, I'm not going to be very attractive to a partner. Poor is not a good, a good quality. So then I go to keep my kids and getting worth all the energy and the spinning of your wheels and the effort and all these committees and things you're involved in. It's just a complicated, busy life. Is that really bringing you what you want? Are you happy? I mean, I haven't had my cat looking up at me. When I was in the middle of grad school, I got tons of papers to grade, I got all these things, and I'm sitting out just looking out at the moon, and my cat's looking over at me, just like, are you nuts? <laughs> are you in higher learning? I'm hungry here. I'm just, right. Well, the cat was in such stillness. The cat was like, just looking at the moon, like, oh, this is wonderful, God, everything. And looking over at me, he's kind of like, what's into you? Why are you staying in grad school? And what is, what's the purpose of all this you know, stuff that you're doing? And I mean, I, I, I better start to <laughs> give question more things, you know, because I could see the cat was in stillness. The cat didn't have all these degrees and all this stuff, and it wasn't juggling ten ring, like a ten ring circus, it was just being in the moment. You know, it was it might chase a mosquito or something for, for fun, but I mean, it was, just, it, was just, it was just very still. So I started to say, I need to move more in that direction. And then when you start to do that, the, the miracles really start to open up to happen. And, and you may find that, that if you feel like in the last four years you've kind of gotten away from it, you can just be still and, and, and with, pers- with some perspective start to look at, at some of the things maybe that you've invested your time and energy in, and then come back to that real simple question, what is it for? Because all of our goals that we have, I mean, I always was raised with goals are good things. You've got to have goals. You can see a thumb. You've got to have goals. And I was raised with the Protestant work ethic and lots of those kind of things. Work hard and learn. And, learn. and those were some of the most difficult undoings for me was when I started following the Spirit. And, and it was like Holy Spirit and, and Christ and all these wonderful miracles started happening, I was judging the miracles. I was judging the way things would come to me. You know, I'd say, okay, great, trust in God, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things will be in and everything, and then something comes oh, I can't accept that. I can't accept that. You know, you know those judgments, again, based on those things that are conditioning. Here, here you are trying to open up to just be happy and serve God, and still the ego mind is going to start to say, well, I can't do that. Can't, you know, it's going to try to judge. So part of my awakening was, you know, sometimes if you've been like a real giving person, it's nice to learn how to receive. It's also good to start to realize that if you've believed in the laws of economics, that you start to loosen your mind from those, and you start to let through synchronicities and things happen and show up in ways in which maybe you can't figure out how it happened or or how it showed up, but you can accept it and you can receive it without figuring it out or without saying, I owe you, you know. Or I don't deserve it. Or I don't deserve it. That's a big one. Because all of those beliefs about unworthiness, about, you know, scarcity, about lack, those are what is getting loosened. And through the miracles, and through the way working hard, I mean, yeah. don't deserve it, I think. As long as you work hard, and you do it. Your cat trusted <laughs> that you would survive. Yes, yes. And you were like God, if you looked at it that way. And that is all we have to do, is trust that it will be provided for us if we trust that it will be. Yes. It's our perception, and when we lose perspective of the, the true perception of what we're supposed to see, that's when our life, you know, basically starts to look really bad. Because we're focusing on the bad parts instead of on the trust that we have, that we are one, that we're part of God, and that it's going to be there. That's it. And trust is... 